Hello, everyone, and welcome to RHAP. I'm your host, Aaron Armstrong, and we are here tonight at a, at a late time, as, as usual here on a Wednesday, to talk about this week's eviction episode of Big Brother Canada 12. And uh, what, what an eviction. Very hyped by Arissa. This was quite the week, quite the, quite the eviction. Anything could happen. You never know. Uh, so let's talk about, uh, let's talk about all of that hype here as we get through this week in the show and with me to talk through it all is Amon. How you doing, Amon? I'm great. Um, yeah, so hyped. So, um, so unbelievably hyped to be talking about Big Brother Canada 12. That might sound facetious, but I actually mean it. I'm just tired, but I'm happy to be here. <laughs> And no, it was an interesting episode and like a lot of crunchiness to get into throughout this week's worth of daily drops. So I'm excited to talk about everything. Yes. Also with us, uh, a person I just accidentally spoiled Survivor for. <laughs> it's Mary. How you doing, Mary? <laughs> doing great. You know what? It's fine. Um, I'm excited to talk about the 2024 season. There's still a woman in the competition. Uh, looks like 50% of the starters are out on loop two. We're talking Barkley marathons, right? That's what this podcast is about because I've pivoted after being slandered like that. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, yeah. Big uh, brother Canada. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we also have with us Matt. How you doing, Matt? I am so good, so excited to be here with my favorite chatty Cathy's and uh, get into everything going on on BB Can 12. Uh, we've gotten, uh, you know, uh, a lot uh, going on the past couple of days, some back and forth, some acting, some Oscar winning performances, uh, they might say in the house. I don't know. Um, but yeah, lots of lots to get into. Who's the chatty Cathy here? We need you know what happens to, ch to chatty Cathy's. They end up on the block. Mm. They do. The block. Line up on that block. Who is the chatty? Chatty. Yeah, I feel like none of us are like extremely chatty. I mean, besides being podcasters. But um, I, I was getting ready to say. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you, Terry. Say of the average population, we're probably we're all probably in the uh, higher. <laughs> chatty yeah, Kathy. Yeah, we be chatting and and we be caffeing. The whole nine yards. Uh, well, um, as we of course saw. That uh, despite the hype, despite the the build up, um, it was all just misdirection. And uh, in fact, Donna was evicted from the house seven to three. Um, now, here's the thing: I don't doubt that like Spicy w could have been capable of pulling some totally wild move and keeping Donna. Despite the fact that I do think it would have been utterly somehow even more disastrous for her game had she actually gone through with it. Uh, however, it didn't happen. And uh, and I think it's especially weird because uh, the drops, I think, were intentionally designed this time around to mislead us and and, and hide things from us in, uh, between the, the, like, the conversations that were had about why it happened um, and the some of the fallout. And some of the campaigning, uh, you know, the the last thing we saw on the drops was you know, basically Monday was the last day we saw stuff. So we haven't seen really much at all from Tuesday or today. Uh, and I think that was intentional because I assume because basically what we saw in the episode was the last thing we saw on the drops, which means even the episodes, we didn't really get much from Tuesday or Wednesday. That's probably because after those conversations, they decided and locked it in and they just decided not to show us that to keep us in the dark and get our hopes up, which. Um, I just, I don't know if I feel like that's the correct strategy. <laughs> like, I feel yeah. like, I feel like it's almost worse. Like, I feel like the audience prefers it, even though it's like, oh, well, we all know what's going to happen. I think the audience prefers that to like, ooh, is something going to happen for the hundredth time that you've convinced me? No? Okay. <laughs> yeah, because it's almost like you don't really have a choice like for future weeks other than to follow that same strategy. It's like, oh, I'm going to continuously tell, you know, the audience that this is like, I'm going to telegraph this messaging to the audience and then it's not going to happen. And like the, the the biggest thing that clued me in on the fact that it wasn't going to happen, not only was it just like the heavy Donna edit because we get that across all reality TV shows. It's like the more you see this person, 
in this episode, they're probably going to go home. But it was like the utter lack of Elijah content. I was like, okay. There's just no way, because there's just no way that you're going to, like, not even show Elijah fighting, which he did, albeit, you know, within 30-minute increments or 30-second mm -hmm. increments. <laughs> Barely. I, <laughs> there's just no way that you're not going to show any of that and then convince me that Donna is not going to be the one that gets evicted here. So, I, you know, there there was a split moment, like, maybe, like, yesterday towards the end of the Daily Drop where I was like, oh, okay, maybe, maybe something can happen. And then... When this one, when the daily drop for today drops, and then when we saw the episodes tonight, I was like, okay, all right, well, I'm, I almost bought the ticket, but I, uh, I canceled it at the last minute because I, I knew what was going to happen. So, yeah, I mean, if you, if you, if you watch the show, you, you probably would have seen a lot of signs in the final, one of the final conversations we saw in the drops, uh, that Spicy was having a conversation with Donna, and she slipped up left and right about like. Donna was like, I just don't want to go so early. And Spicy was like, oh, it's not. Come on, Donna. It's not early. At least you weren't the first one out. Um, <laughs> and then Spicy was like, hey, and you know what? I've been thinking about this a lot. I really think there's going to be a battle back. So you'll be out. I mean, obviously, we don't want you to leave. But like, even if you did, you'd be probably fine. And you come right back. How do you, would you feel about it? And it's just like, OK, so Spicy definitely thinks she's going. Um, mm -hmm. The only the only like. Uh, ambiguity left at that point was the fact that there was still like a full two days that something could have theoretically changed oh, after right. that. But um, right. but yeah, I mean, it was it was I think pretty easy to notice that uh, at that point in time that they showed in the episodes, the decision had not been changed. Yeah, I think from my perspective as a viewer, if they're going to show me what they did, the way to make me think that it's actually a possibility is to show me some of the Elijah campaigning as well. Make it seem like it could go either way because I I don't want them to not show me the hints that it could be Donna staying if these are real conversations that are happening. I think it's hard on the drops when we don't have the context of mm -hmm. was this just a conversation where, you know, a group of people said, "Hey, let's let's have a conversation with Donna and blow smoke up her butt." You know, like Mm -hmm. If we don't know that context, then we don't know. And that's obviously the beauty of being able to watch Big Brother Live is getting to see the cases where there are seasons where people do legitimately flip back and forth and legitimately consider multiple things and you get to watch all of it. And you may be left up at the end and go, wow, I, I wonder what the what the outcome is going to be because it could go either way. It's just that 90% of the time, it was always going to be one outcome. And so the show trying to convince us so heavily that it's going to be the opposite one is kind of transparent because if the show really wanted to convince us, they would just show both, both possible mm -hmm. outcomes. As, um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. As, as far as goose is concerned, uh, Elijah goose, what are we calling him on the podcast? I think here? it's goose. I think we just go. I, goose. I think it's goose at this point, even though they were voting to evict Elijah. Um, but besides the point, um, it's so interesting how to this point in the game, the house guests from almost day one have set him up to be, this is the pawn. This is the guy that's going to be on the block every week. If you're sitting next to him, uh, he's going to stay. You're going to go home. They created this narrative so firmly that it's become reality in all of their minds. It almost feels like in production's mind as well, because uh, if they were looking, I, I feel like if they were work, looking at Goose as somebody that maybe had a possible winning story that maybe they would want to show, like Amon was alluding to, the way that he was pitching throughout uh, that last drop of just pulling everybody aside. He pulled, I think, everybody in the house uh, and he he was so proud to be doing so by having, you know, a uh, quick little conversations with everybody. And he was so happy because uh, he had the opportunity to do so without people thinking he was sketchy for it. So he was talking to everybody and you could have showed like a 60 second montage of him with every single person in the house making the pitch. Um, and they were decent pitches, even uh, as quick as they were. So I don't know if we'll ever see that if he does go on some miracle run and ends up winning this game. Uh, that's going to be an important piece of his week two that was left out in entirely but um i don't know if that's happening you know again they uh all seem pretty convinced that he's just you know pawn star of the of the year yeah yeah i mean i you know i think that i like I, i'm personally fine with not seeing goose's campaign it was not a very exciting campaign um but i do think that like yes i think that if you are trying to make it seem like anything could happen then you know you probably shouldn't 
uh, sort of like advertise your movements in terms of like how you usually operate. But I think my my overall point would be like, d do we really need to be hiding stuff and trying to mislead people? Uh, because like, I, I don't know that that's really the case. Like that's how we've always done things in reality TV. Uh, but but it's also kind of not like Big Brother itself. The show is is kind of living proof that you don't need that tension in your show all the time. The mm -hmm. people who watch the live feeds are the people who are watching the show the most. Uh, like they're watching a, a heavier percentage of the, the episodes than a regular casual on episodes only viewer is. Um, despite the fact that they already knew everything ahead of time. Uh, they're not surprised by your edit that is trying to mislead them. And if anything, they're annoyed by it because they already know the answer, but they're still watching anyway. Uh, imagine if you leaned into that and you leaned into the fact that like um, you are just portraying the accurate thing that's happening most of the time. What that allows you to do is, I think, create a more interesting storyline uh, where you can like lean into the actual emotions of what's happening and you can lean into like the mechanics of what's happening. And it also frees you up to mislead us occasionally um, and really blow our socks off because we're used to you telling the truth. And then occasionally you're like, that's actually not what happened, though. And then it's like, whoa. Uh, uh, yeah. And so I just I feel like they, you know, it, it, in some ways it's like the reality show that cried wolf. Right. Like it just it, you they do it every single time. And very rarely does it actually pay off. Uh, so I think that, I think that there's like a fundamental shift in how you could, uh, decide to tell these stories that would be more interesting. And, and like the thing that I'm personally invested in as a viewer is I want to know more about this story about why Spicy V betrayed Donna and why she changed her mind. Because from my perspective, even as somebody that has seen the drops, I don't really fully understand this. <laughs> I don't really mm -hmm. get what happened to get her on one to one side and then back on the other or even how much of it was genuine in the first place like i'm confused yeah. i don't like being confused no <laughs> yeah um it it did feel like so we had the first drop since we found out that um that victoria was hoh and it was like okay so she's putting up vivek and, and then at some point that just completely switched and i feel like was it before um before the Vita was played that she had switched to Donna. I mean, either way, it, yes. just, it happened yeah. so quickly um, that it was, it was hard to figure out exactly how um, I saw a lot of, well, I didn't see a lot of people. I can't lie and say I saw a lot of people tweeting about Big Brother Canada, but I saw the few people that were tweeting about Big Brother Canada um, during uh, that part of the drop coming out, uh, just being like, you know, the way that Victoria was going about this switch up uh, kind of tracked uh, and just didn't surprise people too much. Um, the way that we got to this point, seeing the rest of Hot Chocolate come together, specifically the women, um, every time that they've had conversations, they're all just generally, uh, you know, they weren't trusting her very much. And I think that's just kind of what it came down to. Yeah. I. I feel like you're about to say something, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, I feel like this episode did hit on two parts. Um, one of which is uh, the group of women that felt like Bailey and Donna had separated themselves some. There was a lot of talk about uh, glances or looks or in the interpretation of glances and looks, which I think is very real. And there are uh, particularly among women, I have had experiences with there are certain types of people who will, you know, you'll be having a conversation with someone and they'll look at you and they go, did you see how that person looked at me? They hate me or whatever. And you're like, Whoa, we're <laughs> like, it, it, and, and a lot of people are like that. I'd, I'd say it's maybe 50, 50 from people I've met people who do not interpret looks that way and people who do. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think it's like, it's, it's very, uh, typical to have people read into things like that and then have the people on the opposite side go, whoa, that's that's not how I meant this at all. I, I didn't even, you've been living for days with, <laughs> with this thought about me that I had no clue was even uh, out there. And I think that um, 
so I think that those things were probably valid on both sides, valid on the concerns of um, those voiced a lot by by Avery and by um, Kayla and Lexis about those feelings. And then also probably somewhat by Bailey and Donna of feeling like, well, I didn't I didn't know that that was even something that was being talked about. I think Bailey and Donna yeah. can't deny the fact that, look, whether or not this East Coast thing was real or not. You, you have been hanging out. You have been separating yourself into a different group. And so wake up to the fact that you're in a game and perception is reality. Like that needs to be uh, out there. Um, but I liked the conversations they were having in this episode about like, hey, let's let's try to not make these assumptions in the future. Let's try to talk this through. Let's try to move past that. So I think that that's one of the reasons why it was really easy for some of the other people in the house to jump on the Donna thing and, and agree with it um, because they did have their own thoughts about uh, why they would want Donna out to begin with. You know, it's like, it's like that thing of once you pick a target and everyone is piling on, it's really easy to think about reasons to not like someone, especially exactly. in a game like this. Um, and then I think the second piece is the Anthony piece, which we didn't see as much of in this episode. Um, but, and we're probably going to talk about it a little bit later, but I think the conversation that even like spicy B starts bringing up of like, Oh, this, this is what the guys are doing. This is what Anthony's doing. And I'm sitting there going, yes, wait, wait, are you realizing it? Is this, are you, is this fake? Do you actually realize it? Are you just saying it? Is, where are we going with this? Um, and that's why I'm really curious to see about like the fallout from that. Because if, if spicy V is saying those words, that means at least a part of her realizes that it, it, it may or may <sighs> not have happened yet, but it might happen eventually. She's and been she saying it so long now. It's, uh, we've been in this house two weeks and she said it probably every single day since then. When the, is she going to do it? Never. The more, but like the more people she says that in front of the better, because if she, if she keeps saying it in front of anyone else in the house, then eventually some people, you know, at the very least, you can't have a scenario where Anthony goes, ha ha, I tricked all of you. You didn't realize anything. It's like you all knew. You all knew what was happening. That, that's yeah. only on yourself. Like the, the, weird, the weird thing for me, though, is that of the things Anthony has been doing, this wasn't one of them. <laughs> like Seemingly. Like, yeah. Right. Like, I mean, as far as we have seen. Spicy approached Anthony saying, I want to make this move. What about Donna? And Anthony, who had been doing all of this work to put the target on Vivek, was reluctant to the idea. He was like, but I'm but I'm doing all this work to do Vivek. And then mm -hmm. Spicy kind of had to convince Anthony by telling him, well, she's trying to come after you, uh, at which point he finally agreed. And then in this episode, she's like, Anthony did this. He manipulated me. He manipulated mm -hmm. us. And I'm like, is Anthony in yeah. the room with us right now? Because I was, I was, that didn't happen. I was very interested in how we got to that leap. And I think, and I, again, I, I'm really not interested in complaining about like how there's no live feeds. But one of the things that I think is very unfortunate is that is the fact that we don't, we, we're not really allowed or afforded um, the chance to sort of have that discourse over like what Spicy V's motivations for this donna nomination were because what they fed us in the feeds and in the episode was she saw him she saw her talking to todd and that was enough that was it that was it that was enough for her to turn everything on her but like we know that there has to be a little bit something more than that and i'm just like a very upset that we can't like sift through the oh is spicy v the jealous type or is she was there more that was going on there was donna sort of like you know and Bailey sort of separating themselves more. But no, we won't really know that because all we got was what we got. And now, like you said, Darren, this whole thing about Anthony being the one to orchestrate, well, since when? Like, I saw him one time, and it's when he was talking about Chatty Cathy's. Like, <laughs> I'm so I'm so confused, Vic but... Victoria you know, made such an effort in the beginning. Uh, and, and honestly, I don't even think I can call it an effort. She just, as soon as she won and all of the women were celebrating, she went to every one of them and said, you can relax this week, girl. I got you. You're good this week, girl. Take a load off. Sit back. Relax. Kick your feet up. 
you're fine this week. And why wouldn't they take that and believe it and run with it? You know, they were sp- they were all talking last week. Okay, well, Janine going out is an exception. She, you know, gotten Anthony's bad graces. And okay, so we're going to lose one woman this week. But then going forward, we're good. A woman wins HOH. It's Victoria. She should be good with everybody. Again, she tells everyone you're good. So when Donna and Bailey are off, like, having their own conversations, and when Donna is, like, feeling comfortable enough to come to Victoria in her HOH bed and say... What about this plan? What about that plan? Victoria taking it so personally, just out of nowhere, plus the conversation that she saw her having with uh, with Todd. It's just like she was looking for reasons, in my opinion, to 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 just say, you know what? Enough with Bailey. Off with uh, not Bailey. Uh, well, Bailey too, but enough with Donna. Off with her head, and then everybody kind of just backing it up and being like, you know what? I guess we have to do it. We, you know, we have a women's alliance still. It's just six w- or five women instead of six. Uh, she was gonna have to go eventually. <laughs> Okay, oopsie, she fell over. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh it's it was it's wild. Uh especially and, and this has been talked to death already, but like okay, she's talking to Todd. Why not Todd? You know? Yeah. You don't have a relationship with Todd. <laughs> like throw Todd on the block if you need to. Let Todd Vivek go. Todd barely has a relationship with himself. Like, <laughs> what's going on with him? <laughs> like, there's so many options she had in front of her, uh, and she Wait, went with this one. What? And is it Sorry, too to talk about the kiss? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say because we may not talk about Todd again, <laughs> and we got pretty far into this podcast without bringing up that there was a smooch on this episode tonight. Out of a smooch, there was a yeah. smooch. No that smooch, smooch felt way more like a let's do a fun thing for show than a like, oh, well, I never got to tell you how I felt. Todd had a crush. Let's be yeah. so for real. Like Todd looked into that woman's eyes and fell in love so fast. Um, he like when she had uh, when she had been put on the block, she kept like talking to him about like, well, I looked good on the block. Right. And he was like, oh, you looked good on the block. You look so good on the block. Like. The, the, yeah, the backstory here, <laughs> uh, there were talks about Todd having a crush on Donna early on. Um, Donna told the women that uh, she didn't reciprocate, that there weren't none of the guys in the house were good looking enough, uh, mm. which I assume uh, included Todd. Um, <laughs> and uh, right. however, uh, you know, they still got closer. And um, while she was on the block, he was somebody who was like steadfast by her side. Uh, telling her she looked good the whole way. And uh, so it's, I don't think it was surprising to see a smooch. Um, but, you know, d- d- how meaningful is it? Who knows? Not we'll probably never. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't seem like she was into it at all. I, I, I could have swore I saw her eyes open as it happened. I'm just, <laughs> I, I, but, you know, <laughs> it happened. Yeah. It just, he is going to call her as soon as he gets out, and she is going to say, "Who is this?" <laughs> no, yeah, it's giving it's giving shades of Riley. It really is. It's kind of kind of like ugh, gone too uh, soon, but are listen, they gone too soon? I don't the know. The next person to nominate Todd can be like, "Dude, plus side, you leave pre jury, you go <laughs> hang out with Don." You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm in support of that campaign. Let's make it happen, <laughs> please. Because what is going on? Oh boy. Well, uh, so that's, I mean, that's where we are. And, and we saw this whole thing and and the question comes back around to, you know, like how, how genuine was spicy in wanting to change her mind here? It does to me seem like she was genuine. I guess it depends, depends on how you like define that word. Uh, because I like like it, like she, I mean, she very much like it, it, it was the meme of like, you know, putting the stick in your t- bike tire and then falling over and then being like, uh, like who did this? How'd that get there? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, um, like she put herself in this box. Like she turned Donna against Lexus. She turned Lexus against Donna. Uh, she uh, contributed and, uh, and, and, and fanned those flames, uh, to the point where the women in her Alliance were like, Hey, I think Donna needs to go. She contributed to this whole East coast thing. She was, you know, uh, all up in that business of like talking about Donna. She told Dougie <laughs> that Donna was coming for her uh, and and on all of this stuff. Um, and then like at the end of it was like, I've been manipulated into tar- targeting Donna by by she, Dougie. 
by Lexus, by Avery, like all of the people she convinced to target Donna, who then told her to target Donna. She was like, they told me to. And I, I just listened to them. Um, I have very I, little sympathy for the, I haven't gotten any sleep. I've been crying. It's like, you put me on the block. I don't <laughs> care how guilty you feel about it or how difficult this is to you. It's harder for me on the block. I think she believes yeah. it, though. Like, I, I I actually do that's think... That's great, and that's fine. It doesn't matter. To a degree, matter. yes. <laughs> I, I think to a degree she's... I, 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 I do think that there's another part of this, and I think it's clear, that is a bit audience-facing. Um, mm. Oh. She said say. in her speech, and it was cut, like, sorry, Canada. And then in the yeah. drop, she's talking to the yeah. camera. Like, I promise, Canada, I'm not anti-women. Uh, I think those are accusations that she did receive in her uh, post-Big Brother Canada 9 experience. And so I... I, I I do not doubt that she stood there and was thinking about like all of the people correctly who were on Twitter saying that, Oh, typical spicy V again. So I'm sure that came into it uh, to some degree as well. Um, but, uh, but at the end of the day there, you know, it didn't happen and we don't exactly know why it didn't happen. Uh, and, and there's, I guess there's not a lot else to really talk about or speculate on uh, in that regard because we don't really know why it stopped. Uh, like if Spicy really wanted to do it, she could have, theoretically, she just needed one extra vote and to break that tie. Uh, Vivek was perfectly willing to vote to keep Donna, even though he didn't end up doing so, uh, which means she just needed one. Could have been Kayla. Yeah, which I was very, I was interested by the fact that Dennis and Vivek did not vote together. I was like, why did that? Happy birthday, Amon. <laughs> Why are there balloons? What just happened? He did a, a sign, like some cameras, like they'll take gestures and then they'll do a thing. I don't know. Uh, for those listeners who are not watching the video version, um, <laughs> Amon just had a party. <laughs> balloons just sprouted in Amon's camera. They were. Uh, Congratulations, Amon. You are now one of my elite employees. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even um, remember what the hell I was saying. <laughs> I thought it was, I thought they were real balloons for a second. I, I you thought they were real balloons. They're like my life flashed the like when they first my life flashed coming. before my eyes. I thought that some I did not know what the hell I was waiting to give it up. So and give it to God. That was so weird. That was that was the <laughs> biggest blindside of reality TV tonight. It was. <laughs> um. I don't know what you were saying, but all I want to jump in with is that uh, Victoria had me cracking up uh, all week with these drops of just her conversations with Bailey and Donna. And she would go into it being like, I don't even know what happened. I blacked out. I don't remember my name. I don't remember my age. I don't remember my hometown. Mm -hmm. I just went up there. All of a sudden, Donna was sitting on the block. I don't know what happened. I, I don't know where I am. Arista Cox hosts this show. I have no idea what's going on. Um, <laughs> just, you know, and, and like you can see it after. Um, after the renom ceremony, the veto ceremony, you see her like obviously very upset and Donna doesn't want to talk to her. And you can see that like the emotions yeah. really were overwhelming her at that point. Um, but the way that she like has t taken that and, and she ran with it so hard uh, to just, again, continuously tell them that she doesn't even know what, she doesn't even know why she did it. I made such a mistake. I don't know why I made this mistake. Um, and, I mean, like, I'm curious to hear what Donna's going to say in these exit interviews, because uh, Janine, when she was asked, I think, especially by Taryn, uh, of like, did you what did you think about, you know, uh, Victoria and how she, you know, she blindsided you a little bit. And uh, Janine was like, yeah, no, I saw right through it. So I'm curious to see if Donna's going to say the same. And if everybody in the house is kind of seeing right through this kind of stuff that Victoria's pulling or uh, I don't know. I will have yeah. to mention to Donna that to the cameras, she said she believed Victoria. Uh, yeah credit it um so i'm i'm interested in that too matt because be, because of the fact that she she was alone in the bedroom and was like i'm not gonna go after her because i feel like everyone else convinced her to do this um and like why would you say that to yourself unless you actually believed it so uh, a part of me is like oh okay well then all of this like topsy-turvy chaotic gameplay is it's seemingly working for victoria but i also i also know that at some point everyone has like a certain level of patience in that house and it's going to run thin in the same way that it did the last time and so while i'm like super you know like i i'm i'm, I'm loving what v is doing it's it's a lot of fun it's, it's crazy it's like it's very hard on your sleeve it's 
it, you know, I, I feel like in a lot of ways, it's the way that I probably might behave in that house. I would hope that I would not be as messy, but I think that it's, it's very unhinged and it's very just like, it's, it's whatever she thinks she's going to go with in that moment. Um, which I think lends to a lot of why people feel so secure with her a lot of the time is because she's so engaging in conversation. She's so just like, I feel like when you're talking to Victoria, like you feel like she's like all in, she's listening to you, you're being heard, like, and I, I just do wonder how much can you keep up that visage and then continuously backstab people? Because I feel like those two things can't coexist for much longer before people are like, okay, girl, we didn't have, like, fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice. We know the story. So, well, I, th I think, I think part of it is it's like the Seinfeld thing. It's like, it's not a lie if you believe it's true. <laughs> and I think yeah. that, like, in every conversation, or in most conversations, I think she's putting her whole heart into each one and, and like telling the truth, her truth in that moment. And then the problem is that her truth changes when that person leaves the room. Yeah. And yeah, and that's the thing with Donna where I feel like it, I believe Donna when she was saying, I'm not going to be a fool and just jump back in bed with everybody who just betrayed me and lied to me. I'm going to remember it. And I am upset. I also believe Donna when she says that she thinks that, you know, that she wouldn't hold Victoria solely responsible because if that's how Victoria feels in that moment, then that's fine. You only, you only need to care about what Victoria feels in that moment, which is tricky because I think that the people who are working closely with Victoria right now, are fine until Victoria no longer feels good with them. So that may not be a case where Victoria's HOH again, and then all of a sudden flips on Lexus. Like that's not necessarily the way that it would happen. It would happen by someone else being in, in uh, power, maybe a guy or somebody or Anthony. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then Anthony telling Victoria, Hey, you know what? Lexus is too big of a threat or whoever. Uh, and then Victoria not saving Lexus. Like that is when the flip could happen. And I think eventually, I think this game with Victoria only works so long as everyone is, as long as the people working with her are still protected by her. You know, it's, it's easy when it's Donna or Bailey that's being flipped on. But eventually I think, uh, someone has to realize, hey, the call's coming within the, you know, from inside the house yeah. here. Can we, let, let's talk a little bit about uh, what to maybe expect now that Donna's gone mm. uh, with this coming HOH um, and the fact that there there may be a curse upon the house. Uh, you know, mm. famously, Mac Maki uh, put a curse on the house in Big Brother Canada 7 and it lingered for the rest of that season and then, you know, Hopefully was excised by the time Big Brother Canada 8 was canceled, right? <laughs> but Anthony, he was there when the curse was laid. And he is back in the house. And I'm wondering if the curse is back. Because uh, on her way out, Arissa asked Janine, who do you think is going to win the game? Uh, and Janine said, I think it's Donna. And then I asked her, like, okay, now that you've seen some stuff, who do you think is going to win the game? She said, I, I think, still think it's Donna. And here Donna is. Tonight, Arissa asked <laughs> Donna, who do you think is going to win the game? And she said, Dennis, you're never going to guess who the big target in the house right now is based on the latest drop. His name starts with Dennis. <laughs> starts and ends with Dennis. You know, yeah. I will say to that, luckily for Dennis, uh, as far as this curse goes, uh, he's also not Bailey. And I think that that could be a big help for him going into this week. Yes. So, yeah. so basically, um, this HOH is huge. Uh, there are some, some members of the resistance, uh, primarily Dennis and Vivek, who have had conversations about Spicy and Anthony working together, perhaps nominating the both of them, which was is what is required to break up this, this massive group. If the two of them are on the block together, it incites a civil war, and it puts both of the power structures in the same spot together. One of them has to leave, and everything gets broken up. Probably. If you play it right. Um, they're probably the only people who would do that, though. Bailey, 
may or may not still be looking at Anthony. She does find him to be quite annoying, uh, which, let's be real, mm -hmm. fair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Mm -hmm. But will she actually target him is another question because uh, Victoria is often in her ear about like make peace with him. Um, so she may or may not target Anthony in the first place. Even if she does, though, she probably puts him up next to Matt or Tola uh, in a spot where he just pretty much easily survives against that person. Um, probably. Um, so even a Bailey win at this point might not be super disruptive. It's really down to. Vivek and Dennis, can they do something? The problem is, the other thing we're hearing on the drops right now is that Dennis is becoming a big target. He won two vetoes in two weeks. Uh, that is historically a very bad thing to do, to win the two first two vetoes in the game. Um, and people like Goose are trying to gather numbers to go after Dennis. Tola wants to go after Dennis. Uh, they are pushing it. And Anthony is like, yes, I agree. And Matt is saying we should go after Dennis. Um, and so Dennis is looking like he might be in some trouble. Uh, and, you know, it's looking like the, the structure could very easily re-solidify without Spicy in charge anymore and with the biggest threats on the block again. Uh, things could, could really uh, simmer down to uh, a nice little calm... Uh, pot of stew um and <laughs> i really trapped myself with that one yeah. uh, <laughs> and so uh the real thing is like dennis he's won two vetoes can he pull out an hoh win and really shake up this season we don't even know what the hoh is yet so who knows? i also say like i'm not super impressed with dennis from a gameplay perspective so far um some of the conversations he's had have been like well, so what we saw, at least in this past drop and kind of uh, coming on the back end of this week was that he was looking to keep Donna. He did vote to keep Donna and send Goose mm -hmm. out because he's thinking, you know, he, he's buying into this idea of, well, if I end up on the block against Goose, I'm going to be the one that goes home and I don't want to deal with that. Um, and just, you know, looking at him as an outsider, having Donna on his side would make a lot more sense than, I don't know, maybe he doesn't have the greatest relationship with Goose, but he yeah. had a conversation with Victoria today where he was like trying to subtly, you know, make some little pushes to her to be like, so do you think that it makes sense? Like, like just kept trying to like subtly push his agenda of keeping Donna. It didn't go anywhere. Um, and it just kind of made me a, a little cautious for him. Um, seeing as, you know, it wasn't really worth sticking his neck out when he knew or he didn't know what support he had behind him to do so. And now like going into next week, like Victoria can remember that and she and her entire Alliance may be even more on board because he was making it pretty clear that he wanted to go against what her plan was. Uh, so again, I'm just not the most, I don't have the most faith in this guy uh, beyond the fact that he can win vetoes. So there's that. Yeah, yeah it wasn't I mean, a good look. Um, just like, especially like you know, you know, talking to Avery about it. Yeah. When Avery had already like promised, you know, you know, uh, Goose that she was going to vote to keep him, it just makes it even more clear that like, okay, we're clearly on opposite sides of this agenda. Not looking good. It's reinforcing the fact that maybe you might need to be the next one to go because not only are you a, you're going against someone that I want to keep in the house, but you also can win competitions and you're showing it twice in a row. It's not looking great, but, you know, things can still change, so we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it seems like a, a just a classic case of um, he just started playing too late. Like, yeah, he should not have won the veto last week. Uh, he should have tactically, tact, uh, tactically thrown the veto. He was not in danger. It would have meant that Janine wins it. Janine stays safe. It disrupts Anthony's plans. It gives him space to operate. Um, he did win it, though, and he decided that he wanted to adhere to the structure of the house, the power in the house. He didn't want to mm -hmm. veer off the path that was laid in front of him. OK, so that's his choice in the game, except by week two, he's trying to change that decision uh, uh, all of a sudden. And so he has gone down one path and he's trying to backtrack and go down the other path all of a sudden. And it's just you it, you kind of made your bet already. Um, mm -hmm. and, and by doing this, you're just attracting even more attention than if you had used it in the first place last week, uh, or even better had just thrown it in the first place last week. Um, and so, you know, 
I, it doesn't mean that there's no hope for him in the game, uh, especially because he can win competitions. And I do think that he is, for better or worse, one of the you know top minds of uh, the opposition to Anthony and Spicy. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but he has really shot himself in the foot with with winning these vetoes, especially the first one we didn't have to, and even this yeah. one. Honestly, he didn't really have to. Um, you know, so. It's just so it's just so hard to like to like juggle and navigate like a position like his in the game because it's like at on one hand like we want to see you know these newbies come together and um vote in their own interests and get rid of the all-stars as soon as possible because you know eight times out of ten the all-stars make it to the end of the season, you know? So you want to see that happen, but at the same time because of the way that the season is set up and because of the way that the game is set up, especially for this particular season, it makes it so hard to go after them initially. So then what you have to do instead is ingratiate yourself with them. But then you have to sort of like ride that line of like, how much do I ingratiate myself with this all-star to the point where like I can stab them in the back at any given moment? Or am I going to get sucked right into the oh, I'm ingratiating myself with Anthony because I just want to get him out. But then you actually start getting to know Anthony. And the next thing you know, you're like, oh, I'm never getting rid of Anthony. It's just like, damn. Like, do you, like, I, I just, I feel like Dennis at this point, it's like you, you're, you have the right mindset of going after them. But I don't necessarily know if you, for week two, are you in the best position to do that now? I feel like you maybe should have just gone. If you recognize that the rest of the house was just like, Al towing to whatever V and Anthony wanted, then you do the same, but start making the inroads to exactly. get them out as soon as you can. Like, be like, you, you need to like constantly have meetings with the rest of the newbies and be like, we're going to do this now. We're going to make sure we're going to say ha ha he he to them in their faces. But the minute that it is time to pull the trigger, everyone has to agree to pull this trigger and just keep putting that in people's heads. But now it's just, it's too damn late because everyone is just like, it's over. Like, I just, uh. <laughs> and like the likelihood that you're going to win your way out from week two on probably zero. Hey, so not you, impossible anymore. <laughs> but if you're feeling like you need to win the veto in week two after winning it in week one, then you're probably already in a pretty bad spot. Yeah. I mean, and you're not even on the block. <laughs> just take note of the fact that him and Viva couldn't even vote together this week. His new number one. I'm, oh, that's I'm what so, you were talking I'm about so before the blinds by that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh yeah, I was. Yeah. I'm, it, I'm, I, oh, could you give us some balloons again? That was a good laugh. <laughs> no, it wouldn't surprise. It, <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if this was intentional by the two of them. It seems like the kind of move they would make to be like, oh look, we're not quite as much of a duo as you thought, even though I used. I'm just like. I'm just waiting for Vivek to win the veto next week and not use it on uh, Dennis because <laughs> I feel like it's in the realm of possibility, but I don't know. Um, that poor man. Um, but I mean, like there was some talk early, early on. I don't know how much I've heard of it lately um, between like Dennis Avery and Bailey of kind of looking out for each other as uh, LGBTQ plus players. Yeah. Um, uh, and like Dennis specifically, I feel like, or maybe Avery as well have talked about like not wanting to actively be the one to go after them. So like, with Vivek potentially Bailey and well should be Bailey for sure um and you know Avery kind of looking out for him in that aspect like maybe he's got a couple more people um and like who's Tola like what Tola who uh you know at this point if Tola is going to go after him I don't know what that means but um you know like you said it's not as clear cut like Dennis is definitely going out but there's a chance uh again Bailey has a lot of heat on her uh the the uh, all stars are always going to have that heat on them if and when somebody's ready to take a shot. Probably not this soon. Uh, it doesn't feel like those are the vibes in the house, but you never know. Yeah, I mean, very quickly the numbers are starting to dwindle. Uh, we started with fourteen. We're now at twelve. The directors' alliance is a group of seven people, um, and so the people outside of that, there's only five. And Tola's kind of attached to the directors' alliance, and that leaves four, uh, which is just like. You know, Bailey, Todd, uh, uh, Vivek, and Dennis. There's not, like, if anybody within the directors wins, it's got to be one of those four. 
Um, and so if a woman wins, it's probably not Bailey at this point, although, you know, knock on wood, at the, we would have said the same thing at the start of this week, um, <laughs> which means it's probably Dennis, Vivek, Todd. Uh, and if a guy wins, they're already looking at Dennis. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's definitely looking a little dire. Um, if Todd wins, who knows? Right. Like maybe he's influenced by Dennis, but Dennis is really attached to Vivek. And Todd was really into it with Vivek. Like he was not happy with Vivek for exposing the East Coast thing. Um, and like he doesn't really he's not really uh, hasn't really been down with Vivek uh, since then. I don't know if that's changed because they were on the same side of this vote uh, or could have been. But Vivek didn't actually vote that way. So maybe he's even more annoyed. Uh, and so like, is Todd somebody that can be picked up now by either the women or the, the other guys? Like it, it starts to look very dire if anybody, but Bailey, Dennis, Vivek, really even Dennis Vivek win this, uh, HOH. Because again, even Bailey might, might take a shot, um, you know, in, in a particular direction that doesn't particularly land. Like they, they, they use their Tola card and they, okay, Tola's gone. Great. We move forward. So did the East Coast uh, exposure thing ever get sorted out a little more among themselves? Like, I, I felt like from what we saw with all the arguments, it was so clear that if they were just in a room in a conversation without Victoria there, that Vivek would have been able to be like, look, she made me list every person. And then when I said y'all's name, she jumped on it and, mm. and, and said that she clearly already knew this was a thing. I didn't say it so she was trying to pit me against it i apologize for like i'm surprised that didn't happen but but i also suspect that maybe it did happen to some extent because we were shown that vivek was pretty quickly after that like you know I, still on good terms with some of them i think he did kind of have that conversation with donna specifically mm -hmm. um and was i think a, a willing participant in saving donna if that were on the table um I don't know that he's talked with Todd or Bailey. They were a lot more hurt uh, in the situation and a lot less willing to like give charity to him. Um, but Donna, even throughout it, was always fine with she. Ne she never really cared. Um, so they maintain that relationship. However, Vivek has expressed to Dennis, I believe, like that he's he's recognized now that that Spicy was trying to trap him uh, to some degree, at least. Um, so. You know, has he been able to convey that to Todd or Bailey? Will he be able to? That is, I think, an open question. Um, but uh, as of right now, I, as far as we know, I think it's unresolved. Yeah. Um, but but it's it, the problem is it's again like, and this is this is where we can I think point to some of what Bailey uh, what Donna did wrong. But it's like after it was exposed, Donna was pushing so hard to save Vivek and to go after the other guys, and even in this episode. In the conversation she has with Spicy, where it's like it was all a big misunderstanding, you don't understand. I would have been so willing to go after Anthony, Tola, Goose, Matt, like every single guy, except for Vivek and Todd. <laughs> like she specifically didn't name those two yeah. as the guy as guys she would have gone after. And it's like, dude, what you what? This is the reason, like the. Whether or not it's a real concrete alliance, this is a group of people that you have yep. sway over. It's like just it's, say the names dangerous. when you're listing off of them or just literally say any of the guys. Like, just say that. You don't. It's so obvious. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, um, she had assurance from Victoria. You're fine this week. You're great. <laughs> Sit back and relax. So never trust um, it. Yeah. Never trust it. Up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I mean, and, and here's the thing. This is what I was talking about uh, on stream today when we were watching the episode is that like if Donna did somehow survive, she'd be in a killer position. Like Spicy would have just blown up her game, blown up the directors. Donna would be sitting there with Todd, Vivek, Dennis, Bailey, oh, yeah. all working for her. Oh, yeah. Uh, while all of the rest of the people in the directors had just have just betrayed each other and been blown up and exposed. And it would have been like it would have been a whole different game with Donna in a in quite quite a position to uh, to recover well. Um, but uh, did not happen. 
unfortunately for her or for that side is uh there's still a player in the house by the name of anthony douglas mm. and uh i do think his influence uh while you know felt a little bit on the lesser side this week because he uh you know when the donna situation came into it he got his input in and he was ultimately okay with it um but in any other week where his closest person in the game is not hoh i think he's getting back in that hoh room and doing the dougie thing of just you know uh you know reassuring them over and over again and, and slowly and subtly pushing the target onto at the beginning of this week or going out of last week it was getting everybody in on targeting vivek uh and now you know he was able to kind of take his foot off the gas a little bit because he trusted victoria she was doing what was best for the alliance and the, it was the alliance that was in power they had regular check-ins um but whoever does win hoh next week if it's in the alliance great he can kind of sit back again and you know make an input but not as much i think if any of these guys like todd's or tola's win i think he like buddies up to them like he's their new best friend and i think they buy it, uh, you know, hook, line, and sinker. So, because that's what Anthony does. No, I hope so, because I feel like this week could have been a lot less messy for him than it was. I mean, Victoria was already out here, like, doing whatever the hell she's going to do. But, Anthony, you really did not need to go in on Bailey in the way that you did, calling her oh a chatty Gabby, just like her friend, and just saying, like, just all of the this. The two stuff. of them just can't it's talk. Such a combustible it's oil, it's oil and water. Oh my god! It's I've like, never it's seen like, this. It's him. like if I didn't know it, I would I would believe that they were married. Like, <laughs> and, and 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 even with even in the way that he handled Victoria after she nominated or she backdoored um Donna, just like I like clearly, I mean Victoria is like at least trying mm -hmm. to convey that she has some type of remorse about this. And Anthony is like, I don't, I don't care. And on, on, on some level, of course, like, I don't think that Victoria's going to like take that and run with it, but she very much could if she wanted to, because that's how, that's just who she is. Or at the very least, she could keep that in her back pocket and be like, this guy is, mm, yeah. if you can do that, then what is that? Like, where, what do I stand? So like, I just wish that Anthony was just a little bit more, because this could have been a, Victoria blew up her own damn game and you could have just sat there and just like let it all happen but you still sort of like had to get like you had to like get your lick back with people that were never even in power in the first place so it's just like how many damn hugs do you need them uh, on <laughs> <laughs> every day yeah. and Anthony is like the greatest hype man in the world uh but the problem is that like that was not a time that spicy wanted to be hyped you know what i mean yeah like, like she was she, clearly not she happy. needed yeah, like she needed like uh like emotional support. Like uh not like not <laughs> like the opposite. Weird. Not like yeah. strip emotion from it, get hyped. She needed like empathy, uh to be like, I know how hard that was. She like um and, and he's not incapable of that. Like they had that conversation when Janine left. Um and, mm -hmm. and and you know, maybe it's a situation where like that's what he'd be looking for when he's in that situation, but I don't think that's what Spicy was looking for by any means. No. Um, especially and, when uh, she was already conflicted about getting rid of another girl it just was she though I, on some <laughs> level I think that she I think, hmm, that's a very interesting <laughs> question but I, I do think on some level that she was but at the same time I'm like you know at the very least Anthony just just you know acquiesce to whatever the mood or whatever the vibe of the situation is just real quick and then whenever you leave that room then you can be like <laughs> Girl, I don't give a damn. Bye, Donna. Like, like, just do that. I don't need you to like rub it in V's face because the girl is volatile, if nothing He's else. Done this okay? with, volatile with, uh, Victoria. I feel like he keeps doing this with everybody, not just Victoria. Like this like extreme pump up, like I'm your coach and you just hit a home run. Uh, but like you just hit every home run and you just want us the whole game. Like he does that with everybody to pump them up and make them feel so good about themselves. Um, but yeah, in this particular <laughs> moment, it was just not the right. You know, luckily it was Victoria and he doesn't have to like do extreme work on her to to help her and make her feel comfortable uh, because they got each other so much. But with anybody else, like they're going to be confused and maybe off put and maybe maybe start to feel like that's a little disingenuine. But I don't know. Is yeah. it possible? And look, mm. I'm not trying to to say things, but is it possible that maybe there's a reason that Anthony was great in an all guys alliance? Well, see, that's that's what's interesting to me, right? Because I was thinking about this and because in the house, they're talking about this, too. Like you work with the guys, you're a guy's guy. Um, and I do mm -hmm. think he's a guy's mm -hmm. guy in general. Um, mm -hmm. But like in thinking about it, you know, Anthony wasn't the guy who created that. Alliance. He wasn't the guy who like picked the people 
uh, like he was brought into a pre sort of fabricated in Adam's mind idea of I want four guys. And when you think about like, okay, well, who were Anthony's like side people? Like he had like Kalen, he had Corey. Oh my God. Um, and Don't it was take like, me back to this place. <laughs> right. <laughs> like the people he actually like worked the most uh, were, were women. Um, and so, cause I, I was thinking about this too, like maybe he's just good with guys. Uh, but then when I think about it, it's like, oh, well, he actually worked but almost. It's not like the conversations the he had with Corey were like, yeah, uh, us two well, completely equal sharing conversation <laughs> and having thought and I'm listening to you and hearing you out. It's not really how the conversations went. Well, that's the thing. I think it's less probably specifically about like gender and more just about personality types. And I think that Corey had a personality type that meshed really well with anthony in the way that he communicates um and 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 i think bailey is basically the complete opposite of that. he he did not have a bailey in bb can seven and i love that she, i love that she's here now because yeah, it reminded me a little bit oh of chelsea God. like because chelsea would bounce off of anthony a bit uh as well yeah. back, uh, but back she didn't BB have seven. the emotion that bailey has i feel like chelsea was a little uh, unless i'm misremembering i feel like she was a little bit more like buttoned up well bailey is willing to just like yes. go at him bailey's not willing to let it go yeah um, no which, she is which, not which I appreciate. Uh, and and I'll, I'll say this too. Like, there were a lot of these conversations that the women have. And I know like, everyone's dunking on the women uh, right now because they're cannibalizing each other and they're, you know, not doing well in the game, whatever. Um, but like, for me, when I'm watching these conversations, if you strip away the game stuff, like, they're actually really cool conversations some of them had in the in the wake of this move where they were talking about like, their vulnerabilities and mm -hmm. the way that they turn on each other and the way that they the way that they're expressing themselves and trying to like reconnect like if this was real life like i would be like so honored and grateful to have friends like that <laughs> you know what i mean like the way that they're communicating with each other uh it's it's a cool thing in the game not working uh yes it's embarrassing but like i think these are some cool people like on a personal level uh so you know, it's just it, like Bailey in particular, I think is just so funny um, and the way that she like just fights Anthony, even though she probably shouldn't uh, is just like no, I she think doesn't it's, care. I think it's she doesn't care. She's she, yeah. like, when she said you are so annoying. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> talk uh, your shit. Get it off your chest. I love that yeah. kind of stuff. So. Like if he if he is HOH this week, like he's going after her so hard because he just can't deal with it anymore. Um, but like if there's an HOH that's not planning to go after her, like we're just gonna get this scene again in next week's daily drops or next week's episode. They are not going to let it go with each other because no, like again, like Amon said, like they act like they've known each other for so long, it, like they're married, it, like they just. I'm <laughs> telling you, I there's a world. I I genuinely I think there's a world where like if somehow the two of them make it further like closer to the end i think there's a world where they work together i really do i think that like uh the classic, i think the biggest nobody would expect it well, well it just more so he decides like, it, it's worth it to him it, well it, i i think it's more than that i think it's the fact that they are so open with each other about how much they don't like each other at times there's an open there's an honesty in that mm. that i think can eventually lead to trust um, and, uh, and I, I don't think that they'll both stick around long enough for this to happen, but I do actually think it's possible that they start like kind of closely working together. I think circumstances would have to allow for that to happen and yeah, that I would to say. take a while, but, um, it, it, I think it's interesting. I, I would be very curious to see that play out, uh, if it was if it was able to especially if bailey got an hoh and like doesn't go after anthony like she can you know have that in her pocket for weeks to come no yeah but. no i agree with that i definitely feel like because you know just the, in the way that they communicate with one another like i feel like that like level of honest begrudgment is not necessarily something that you see a lot of the time so i definitely feel like um i feel like if there was like a common enemy that popped up between the two of them Oh, for sure. They'd be like, oh, let's just Anthony, I don't like you right now, but like, let's get this bitch up out of here. I can definitely see that happening, but whether or not that common enemy will like 
you know, expose themselves for that to happen. I don't know. Um, but, you know, for right now, I'm just enjoying the feud and I'm just very interested to see who comes out on top. It's looking like Anthony for right now. But, you know, I don't think that Bailey is entirely incapable of an upset. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I, I have in the chat with a great point. Like, uh, I think here is a great example uh, where um, in Big Brother Canada 7, Anthony was back and forth with Kira so often. But like at the end of the day, they always kind of came back to kind of working together, um, even though they were bitter enemies at times. <laughs> and it was just like, uh, Anthony I don't know. did I, say I, he was going to sit on the floor to talk to, I think, Bailey and Donna uh, to make sure he wasn't intimidating them. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> I just will always be a fan of there being foils to the returning players. You know, it, returning players, Jose. I think I said this at the round table, it doesn't impress me when an intern, returning player comes in and demolishes a house of newbies. That doesn't, like, that's that's what you were handed. Mary, right. I don't know if you know this, but Survivor no, Season 22. No, it doesn't count. Survivor Season 22 doesn't count. That is an exception to the rule. I don't I, know I if mean, you know this about our good friend Boston, Rob. <laughs> I think, I like, I... I think it's particularly in Big Brother because so much of the game is about like the day to day talking with people and manipulating them that that's I just I want to see everyone get a chance to do that and to play it. And when, especially in the new game where it's so likely to have the same people winning competitions over and over and being the only ones in power, there's just less you can do when you're not in power than in something like Survivor. Yeah. So yeah. that's the main thing. And like I, I find both Anthony and Victoria to be very entertaining on the season um, and in their past seasons. But uh, I just, yeah, I, I, I want to see other people being able to play and not wondering if they could have done differently if they weren't in the house. So, yeah. mm -hmm. all right. Well, uh, anything else to uh, to talk about before we start to wrap up here on a Wednesday night eviction episode recap? You're a big film guy. What did you think of the uh, the film? Oh my that gosh, were we almost made it through. No, nope. yeah. we, almost, <laughs> we almost got through <laughs> for this uh, sponsored segment. We had some great movies. I'm surprised they. I personally the, felt uh, like the movie. horror film was stronger, but that's just me. That was clear. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but I, like another, the horror film was Dennis, like a solid three much. out of ten, um, and it was still head head and shoulders above the rom com. So Matthew was, yeah. was it Matthew and Vivek that like were secret lovers, or was Matthew not Matthew? I, like I didn't I get it. No, I didn't get it. And but, then they won six thousand dollars. <laughs> like that's an easy, the, easy money. The plot. I, I'm just about ready to exchange my Samsung Galaxy phone right now. Is is my feeling? <laughs> Not that. <laughs> time, time to trade in for uh, an anti ad. <laughs> well, I I did think it was interesting before they even pulled the like sheets off of the things. I went, oh well, the two categories are going to be horror and romance, of course. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, uh, that's obvious here because. I thought it was just going to be comedy and drama. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I thought it was a slight possibility after they pulled horror that they might go comedy, but I'm like, what props are they going to, unless it's just like a clown nose, like what are they going to, what are they going to do for, for yeah, comedy? Yeah, true. <laughs> I feel like they missed the mark with the horror because, and I was saying this on stream, but like the, with horror, I think if you go for, you straight go for horror, you you kind of can't lose. Because you either succeed and it's a cool horror thing, which, quite frankly, you're not going to uh, with the resources they had, or you it's fail cheesy. at being horror and it's funny yes. how you fail. Which is also horror. <laughs> with, exactly. And so, like, you kind of, it's kind of a win win. Whereas with like a rom com, if you're trying to be funny and you fail, like, there's no backup. Like, that's just oof. Um, so I felt like they missed the mark with the horror thing a little too much because, like, they tried too hard to be funny, uh, yeah. which then failed. <laughs> But yes. there was still enough of like, like the first like grab of like Anthony was like, oh, that's funny because it's bad. Um, <laughs> so uh, I think that's why it was still like head and shoulders above whatever it is they turned out with the other one. <laughs> well, in the in the only way to play romance and make it funny is to go either parody romance or like, you know, like try to do Twilight style romance, basically, or go like a 
oh, oh what are they called? The like t- the TV shows, like the the bold and the beautiful. What what, what is that? What so is that called? So yeah, soap, like go soap <laughs> opera style, which I think is kind of what they tried to do. I think I think with something like this, like uh, you need sincerity. Um, like if you try to just go like too wacky off the wall, like oh we're we don't really care about this because we're actually too cool for it. Uh, we're just doing a silly thing. Um, it doesn't work. It, you, you, you need to. We need to feel like you believe in what you're doing as like an actual product of, of something. And then even if it's bad, that's funny. Like that still works. Right. If you have the sincerity there, it can still work no matter like, what what it is. Bring in an actual director to like direct this challenge. I mean, every time there's this guy, you know, <laughs> a drag race I'm on, they bring in, you know, an expert mm-hmm. each week weekly challenge. Like bring in somebody to to like actually give them direction and try to have All right. Them. Special guest for this eviction episode, it's Christopher Nolan. Whoa. Coming in. <laughs> yeah. The face lift. He's like, wait, he, I have to shoot on a phone? Uh I brought this <laughs> IMAX camera. <laughs> Like, don't you guys have cameras everywhere in the house? <laughs> but, uh, okay. All Beautiful. right. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, listen, I thought that was the biggest waste of my time that I've experienced. But it's in, something that wasn't on yeah. the daily drops. It was new content <laughs> to uh, consume. The, uh, other, the other thing that I wanted to bring up before we get out of here is uh, the Donna and Arissa interaction at the very end of oh, the episode. Oh, no. I thought we were going to make it through without Donna. <laughs> <laughs> like, stepped on her it clothing. so out. cringy. I hate it. Yeah. Like, Donna was, like, doing the hair flips, like, eating up the audience time. Like, she was getting the scream. She knew she looked good. She was ready to get out there and, and, and just take in the audience. So she gets out there, and she's just, again, like, eating it up. And Arissa's trying to close the show. No, and they're like clashing into each other. Uh, Arissa literally is like, "Stop trying to take my job. Get out of here, girl." Yeah, you know, like, I liked it. What? I liked what? it because it interrupted the lie that they tell at the end of every episode. <laughs> Someone's hey, always watching. Someone True. is watching. They are not though. <laughs> they not. missed the sock last season, and I guarantee you, they're missing stuff this season. Uh... She's like, Arissa, you need time off. Is there a- another kid coming? Some- no, sometime yeah, soon? she was. She was gunning for it. She was like, if imagine you like the next episode. Donna's the one that introduces, like, like uh, it's time for this week's eviction. <laughs> and they all look up at the screen, and Donna's there. Yeah. Uh, Arissa, <laughs> I just in the future, don't sign off before running it by me first. Okay? <laughs> like, uh, I'm, I'm like the sign off person. I really know a lot about this. This stuff, is my so. thing. <laughs> All right. Well, that's what we have for you tonight, then, uh, here on Big Brother Canada. Uh, I'll be back on Friday to update you on uh, everything that's going on on these drops that we see over the next couple of days, which should include the HOH and their intentioned nominees. Um, so uh, stay tuned for that. Um, I will also be talking to Donna tomorrow. So if you want to hear what Donna has to say, if she's going to uh, keep the curse on Dennis, or uh, or how she feels about uh, Spicy V now. Uh, tune in tomorrow to check all of that out. She may come for your job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Just uh, it, it was funny when when uh, when Todd was giving his goodbye message. Um, I was like, why does it sound like he's reading a poem? Uh, and then two seconds later, Did she's like, read? why does it sound like he's reading a presentation? <laughs> I was like, oh, I hey. swear. It's almost like you see his eyes moving too, just with the, the speed like at which mine. he's talking. Yeah. Um, so tune in for that. Uh, of course, uh, Survivor's on tonight as well. Uh, luckily, I haven't spoiled any of you on Survivor, so if you haven't watched it, you can still go and do so. Um, but uh, I will be talking to Shannon this week. We had to postpone the one we planned to do last week, but we will be talking about Survivor this week, so uh, stay tuned for that Survivor coverage with the great Shannon Gus. Um, and uh, I talked to Rob today. Big news in the reality TV world. Uh, one Mr. Beast, the biggest YouTuber on the planet with like, you know, 200 something million subscribers, uh, just got a $100 million deal with Amazon for, to make a, a competition reality show. Uh, and there's all kinds of in, all kinds of implications that uh, that I talked through with Rob today in a, a video that we made. So uh, check that out over on the channel. And uh, yeah, I think that's about what I got. Check me out on Twitch. Amon, what do you got going on? You can find me everywhere at Amon Adwin. I am chilling with Liana and Beth over on the Drag Race Rehab Up podcast. We are nearing the end of the season, getting down to the top six queens. So check us out over there. And that's about it for me. 
right, Mary? I am doing this. So hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us here on the Big Brother podcast. That's where you can find me right now. Um, but otherwise, if you want to see anything else I'm talking about, you can just follow me at Frail Mary. All right, Matt. Uh, on Twitter at Matt Liguri and uh, actively always podcasting about the challenge. Uh, we're in a break right now, but we're still doing some stuff uh, with yesterday. One of yesterday's guests, uh, Brian Scally and I over on the free agents podcast. So challenge all stars is kicking off in just a couple of weeks. And then season 40 right around the corner. Not a lot of challenge fans in the panel here, but uh, we're having fun over there. So that <laughs> is what I got. All right. Well, that is what we have for you tonight. Thank you all so much for joining us here today. And we will see all of you next time.